that's diseases. We all know that diseases exist as we define them. They're concrete things, we think. However, many kinds of diseases are classified together merely because they share symptoms. Let's take cancer as an example. Um, there's no such thing as cancer as such. Cancer is not a single disease, but a set of diseases classified together by smart people due to their similarities and how they work, how they affect people, and how they might be treated. But experts know that cancer comes in many varieties, has many different causes, not all of them known, and causes a variety of symptoms. Also, the same kind of cancer can cause varied effects, depending on the um, depending on the patient. Uh, different people respond to the same disease in different ways. And yet we still find it useful, at least in public discourse, for funding and stuff, to discuss all kinds of cancer under just one umbrella term, because they have similar causes and similar treatments. Now, doctors and researchers and those suffering from particular cases of cancer find it useful to further differentiate the kinds of cancer in order to better uh, treat it, treat their particular variety. However, even as far as we are able to divide different uh, types of cancer from each other, there is still much unknown about it. Cancer research continues for this reason, so that we can differentiate the different kinds of cancer and thus better treat them. So cancer does not exist as such, except as an aggregate, a set of diseases which we y see fit together in order to streamline funding and research, and to help researchers access various unrelated problems that may have similar solutions. So just as a hand is a collection of molecules that happen to move in tandem, which we uh, conveniently classify together in order to understand and predict where those molecules as a group are going, and what's our, what our hand is going to do, so cancer is uh, an aggregate of diseases that we there doesn't necessarily exist. It's just useful for predictive purposes. Okay, now to stay with the topic of diseases for a little longer, I want to talk about um, mental illnesses and depression. And physiologically, mental illnesses are perhaps less well understood than cancer. I'm not a scientist or researcher, but that's my understanding. It seems that a wide variety of causes can result in similar symptoms, in, in such as, for example, clinical depression. Um, it's still not entirely clear in any given case whether the primary cause of the disease is physiological, chemical, dietary, genetic, or something to do with the stress levels in the patient's lifestyle, or some other factor. Probably it has, it has something to do with all of those things working together. Like the hand, these various factors are aggregated in our experience as a single phenomenon, and we perceive that as mental depression, as clinical depression. and Science has seen fit to combine this set of similar um, illnesses or you know things going wrong as one thing. What does this have all have to do with uh, the spiritual world? Uh, well, I'll tell you. Uh, we modern skeptics, uh, people of science and reason, we deride our ancestors for ascribing disease to evil spirits and demons and such. We don't have much respect for witch doctors. But we know now that cancer is cancer, and depression is depression, and psychopathy is psychopathy. It can be treated. But weren't the ancient people really just doing the same thing that we do? Weren't they really just classifying similar diseases and illness? I mean, the best they could. They didn't have formalized science. They saw a set of circumstances and created an aggregate explanation for every instance of those same or similar circumstances. If an evil or unclean spirit was determined to be present, ritual cleansing was required. And enough of the time, uh, which needed only to be a small percentage of the time to succeed, really, then that, if it worked, if that ritual worked and the person was cured or felt better, then that ritual would become part of the training of the priests or witch doctors or whatever. Still, our modern way, our modern what we have, is much improved from those early days because we have formal systems to improve our accuracy at predicting and defining things like disease. Uh, the most famous of these systems is, of course, the scientific method. And as good as it is, though, even the scientific method must use shortcuts and generalizations and in fact that's what it's all about it's about defining 
things that aren't necessarily the same, but it's useful to think of them as being in one group. Uh, okay, back to spirit. This is where I talk about spirit. What, what is spirit? Does it exist? What is the, the stuff of spirituality? Well, no, it doesn't exist. Uh, like the hand, spirit is an aggregate, or like cancer, like depression. Uh, it's many different factors combined into a higher abstract concept, and some of these factors themselves are abstract. So no, a spirit doesn't exist. It can't be, uh, can't necessarily be measured to any degree of preciseness, and it, probably not to the same precise degree as something like a hand or a disease. So an evil spirit represents an attitude. A spirit can also stand for the ideas of a group of people, uh, such as team spirit, school spirit, the spirit of the times, or what is called the uh, Zeitgeist in German, I guess. Zeit being time, Geist being spirit, Zeitgeist, spirit of the times. These things are aggregates of smaller factors. They're simplifications of a more complex world one which you couldn't measure. Um, you couldn't measure, uh, well I guess you could measure like everybody's opinion in an entire nation and get a zeitgeist. I don't think you could though. I don't think it would be practical. I don't think anyone's ever going to be able to do it. Maybe the internet will help. I don't know. Stay tuned. Uh, so if that's what spirit is, then what is God? God is spirit. God is an aggregate. He's a collection of attributes of the universe. He's just as real as my hand, as I've already shown. He, he is uh, another way of um, picturing the universe. And so how can we measure God? Well, like, like I said, it's, it's tough. It's like measuring the zeitgeist. I'm not sure if I'm the best one to propose this, but I say that a little bit of what God is is found in every single human being. He's an aggregate of these spiritual things. He's supernatural, he contains the unexplained, all things mystical within human beings. It doesn't matter that things, like emotions, um, have material origins, um, because God is the sum of these things, so the sum of all emotions, all relationships, and all other things that can be called spirit that are known to humans. A hand has material origins, yet it is still a hand, it still exists, it's still, most of us consider a hand a concrete thing. Likewise, um, God has, uh, I'll be careful here because I won't say that God originates from matter or material because I think that the concept of God is eternal and universal. However, the things that make up God are uh, the things, I guess this is pantheism, <laughs> where everything is an aspect or part of God. I disagree that everything is an aspect or part of God. However, I believe that everything that exists is used to define God. Now, we create our image of God, God being another thing that exists, like a hand. You know, it exists, but we also have to create an image of it we have to create an image of God in our minds, in our heads, in order to understand him. And otherwise, the hand would be out here and it would be unknown. We wouldn't know what a hand is. Likewise, God, we wouldn't know what God was unless we were able to define him somehow, which is what we do with all this aggregated spiritual data, the stuff that doesn't really fit anywhere else, and it's much easier to think of it in terms of personification. and. Thus, we personify God, and we create, we, we see him. Now, I'm not, I'm, because God has a personality, and he's real, he's out there. But, like my hand, we can only see him through our own um, senses. And we can only discover God through uh, learning about the universe, which he's created. And I think that's it. I'm going to have to conclude there. Thank you for staying with me for this long. Bye.